Hello, I'm Siddhi Ashani from IIHM Kolkata and we are celebrating International Chocolate Day which is on 7th of July every year. As the day suggests, it is the anniversary day of introduction of chocolate to the world which was around in the year 1550. Chocolate was introduced in India, in Kerala, in the year 1798 but commercially it only came from the year 1960. Chocolate is a food product made from roasted and grounded cocoa seed kernel. So uh, it's a very entirely a long process where the uh, chocolate that we get in the market, in the packet, comes from the cocoa bean. It's an entirely long process which we'll be doing it in details later. For now we'll be learning how to use that chocolate which we get in the market. We get chocolate in two forms in the market. One is in the compound form and the other one is the curvature form. In the curvature form, we have more of cocoa butter and no, almost no additional fat or oil which makes it very impure. And the compound butter that we get, compound chocolate that we get has no cocoa butter, only additional fats and Oils, which makes it very easy to settle down once you are going to use it. This is the curvature chocolate which is what we are supposed to use. We need to temper the chocolate. Now what is tempering? When we take the chocolate on a marble slab and make rigorous movements with the help of a spatula or a scraper so that all the components in the chocolate come down to one temperature and uh, settles as soon as we try to spread it. Hence, we can coat the chocolate on cookies, on cakes, on candies, etc. etc. So, the, these are Calyx of Calibu chocolate. Calibu is the brand, and Calyx is what we call the chocolate, the curvature chocolate. This will be going in a double boiler or in the microwave to melt it, and then we can start with the tempering, the process of tempering. When we start melting the chocolate, it should uh, have a high temperature which will be uh, not close to the boiling point, below the boiling point. So it melts completely and when we start tempering, it should drop down to 55 degree centigrade, 40, 50 to 55 degree centigrade. Now let's start the tempering. I have taken, I am using a double boiler. You can also use a microwave for this. There is a pan with water which will go up to around 100 degree but the temperature of the chocolate will not go more than uh, 95 or 90 degree centigrade. Let's start melting at a very slow temp, I mean slowly. So once we keep it on the double boiler, after some time we see that the chocolate has melted. Though you see that the chocolate is not smooth enough and it does not have a pouring consistency. To this consistency we will start tempering it to bring that bring that flowy texture so bring it out now there are three ways of tempering one we can use a sous vide to do the tempering second is a seeding method where to the melted chocolate we can add some extra calorie pellets and keep melting it till the temperature of this chocolate goes down that's one more and there's one more method of tempering that is the marble slab method which we will be doing right now so let's start tempering on the marble slab the tabletop should be clean and it should have no water or dust particles we will need a palette knife, a bent palette knife would be suitable and we will need a scraper if the quantity of the chocolate is more. Then we take the chocolate making sure that there is no liquid at the bottom and then pour the entire chocolate on the table. You again, you still see that the chocolate does not have a very slow consistency because of the different temperatures of the components. Clean palette knife and then start moving to and fro. 
ensuring that the temperature comes down the temperature of the tempered chocolate would be around 45 degree to 50 degree to understand the temperature without a thermometer we can check it by the coolness of the chocolate which can be tested by using your palm if you feel cold enough or cool enough i will not say cold cool enough that means the temperature is around 45 to 50 degree and it is ready to be used for different purposes after depending upon the quantity of our chocolate that we have after 2 to 3 minutes of spreading to and fro throughout the table we will see that the chocolate has become cold enough and we will have a flowy consistency if you can see i'll show you once again the chocolate can flow this is what we need after tempering this is we see that the chocolate is flowy enough to coat and cover this is the temperature i mean this is the texture and the temperature would be around 45 to 50 degree we take the bowl and put it back inside the bowl for further use so this is what tempering has done to the chocolate it is still in the liquid form but it is very easy for us to use it for coating purposes because it immediately sets once you temper it you can see there's a shine in the chocolate that we have it is totally ready to be used for coating purposes there's a shine if you will temper it properly you will uh, how do you test the tempering it will have a coldness a certain amount of coldness when touched to the skin and there will be a shine and it flows very easily this is what the texture of the chocolate looks like after tempering once the tempering is done the chocolate is as i discussed it is ready to be used for making garnishes for making desserts for making anything of your choice today we are going to make a chocolate mousse a chocolate gato and some garnishes and i'll be showing you how to use these chocolate garnishes to garnish the cake and the mousse so let's start there's a very easy garnish uh, very simple and we all can do it very easily at home we need tempered chocolate and we need a brush this is a brush uh, which can be it is available at any store timber store very easy to use just dip the brush into the chocolate and make a very thick coat if you think that it is not very thick you can make a double coat so it is very it will be very easy for us to remove it from the ohp sheet i have used an ohp sheet it is also very easily available in any craft shop where you can get butter paper mount board just the use the name ohp sheet these should look like feather thick at the bottom thin as we go up so if you think that it's not as thick as it should be in the bottom we can make double coats as i am doing if you want to do something more to these garnishes you can always do more by using some sprinklers on the chocolate so once it sets these garnishes will all this sprinkler will also come out and it will define the product where you are using it continue with making more few simple garnishes chocolate garnishes i have taken a butter paper a parchment paper and made it into a cone and then filled up the filled up the cone with some tempered chocolate and ready to make some garnishes there are few very simple ones which we can do we call this one as a snake
this can be used for glasses a uh, mousse glasses it gives the elevated structure or oh, there's one more that we can do that is make this these are all free hand you can do whatever you want to do we can use an ohp sheet for making garnishes but we can also use a silk pad for making the garnishes it is very easy and it also gives that pop marks which is there on the silk pad how we use it similar way i'll show you one more way one more easy garnish there's one more simple garnish okay once you do that with the help of your spoon or with your hands whatever you can just make just pull out the dots ensuring that it's not very thin if it becomes thin you can always add some extra chocolate and let it flow and if you want to learn how to write on cakes the best ingredient to learn it from is chocolate if you understand the temperature of the chocolate and if you know how to use the chocolate on the cake you can write with any other ingredient let's see let's have a look the same piping bag and this is how we can write on the cakes depending upon the size of the cake you can always increase or decrease the font you can write cursive or you can write whichever way you want so we saw how we made the chocolate garnishes we'll again use chocolate for another purpose that is for making a mousse to make a chocolate mousse we need to have a base of creme anglaise this is a mixture of egg yolk milk and sugar and we we'll cook this over a double boiler we have a pan so a pan ready with water which is warm with the help of a whisk we keep whisking sorry while the creme anglaise is getting cooked we will be talking about the ganache which is also a product made up of chocolate we are using one we are using the ratio 1 is to 1 and a half or 1 is to 2 where one is cooking cream and 1 and a half or 2 is dark chocolate we will take the cream heat it over the flame uh, not too much once it starts heated up heating up we will put the chocolate which is a uh, small calibou that we are using and then switch off the gas once the gas or the induction switched off we will cover it we will cover it and allow it allow the chocolate to melt into the cream once melted this is what we get as a product this is a chocolate ganache made up of calibou chocolate Okay. So coming back, coming back to the omelette. If you keep cooking it, you will see that this kind of a texture is seen. This shows that the omelette is ready. Switch off the flame and allow it to cool down so that we can start making the mousse. Our creme omelette is ready, and we'll start making the mixture by folding omelette with whipped cream and our chocolate ganache. so we we'll start by putting the mixture in the bowl take some cream fold it Okay, so once the cream is folded into the cream into the cream omelette, we will take the ganache and we will let it incorporate into the mousse and make it a chocolate mousse. Slowly, once you add chocolate into the cream, you cannot mix it too rigorously, or else it will curdle the entire mixture. So go slow with the mixing process. Uh, once if you think that the chocolate uh, the mixture is very light you need more 
chocolate to it you can always add more chocolate ganache into it and once the folding is done you will keep the bowl inside the fridge and allow it to set once it's set you can pipe put it in the bowls make panels do whatever we want to do and then serve this is the texture that we get once you keep it inside the fridge for some time we cannot set it completely or else it will get difficult for us to pipe we will start piping the chocolate mousse into for today we will be doing it into martini glasses i have got two glasses i have a plastic bag Take this mixture. And now, with the help of your, see what you want to do, and then. This is one way of doing the chocolate mousse into your glass and there's one more way which you can use it take the ganache that you just prepared with cooking cream and dark chocolate you can just with the help of your fingers you can do that or with the spoon whichever way you want to do i would prefer a spoon so that from the outside it looks like this and then you will take your mousse which is still there in the piping bag and make swirls this is what you do and this is the difference between two glasses Now, time for using your garnishes that you have prepared. So, once you have piped the mousse, the ganache that you have prepared, you can just take it, heat it up a little bit so that it is fluid, not too much, just a little bit on the top. and then when we are doing it without the ganache you can take your garnish always take the help of a palette knife make your garnish is thick so that it is easy to lift them up and it can break also this so you will take your garnish and the mousse needs to set a little more and if you want a little bit of color or color into it you can take some white brushes that you all made that we made let's see for the other one and there's one more easy way to get take out your garnish just flip the ohp sheet and just let it come off so the garnish that we made three so we can just combine them together and stuff it inside for this we have a different a little bit of golden pearls that's it this is what we have Always remember when you are garnishing a dessert, less is always more. Okay, so once our mousse is done, I'll show you one more way of using your chocolate. Let's just keep the mousse on the side, and we have this cake, a very small cake. Nowadays we call this as a bento cake, a small half a pound. So this is a this is a cake that I have just prepared. 
vanilla chocolate cake with layers of chocolate inside and ganache on the top. This is a very trendy cake. You see a lot of ganache in the pictures these days. So this is what I have done. Let's finish the cake with the chocolate ganache. This is what we had made in the very beginning. OHP sheet. Feathers with chocolate and brush. So if it comes out this way, good enough. Or else just flip the OHP sheet and clean it off. This is how easy it is. It will only come out this easy if the garnish is thick enough and the chocolate is tempered enough. Tempered well. Now, we'll take the garnish, very easy. Take the garnish and start sticking it. On the sides. The chocolate garnish, make sure that the temperature is cold enough or else the chocolate will start melting in your hands. Let's make, add some little bit more garnish to the cake and break the brown color. So I've got the same garnish which I use in the mousse as well. I will just ensure it comes off well. Check the, check which has to be the front. So this will be the front of my cake. And I'll be garnishing the cake from here. So I'll take this, I'll put the feathers into the cake. Since this cake has chocolate and gold, I will not put any other color. Just to show you, I have a small cone of white chocolate to break the color. Just to show you, we can write it on the small cake as well with the help of chocolate. And there's one more thing that if you want to do, you can do. You can take the chocolate and on your feathers, go very slowly. It can give you a different look. There are a lot of ways in which you can use the chocolate on your cake or your desserts, wherever. This is a complete cake. So now, after the entire session, we understood a lot of things that can be done with the chocolate, provided the tempering of the chocolate is done correctly. Wishing you all a happy International Chocolate Day. May you have a lot of chocolates all your life. Thank you so much.